Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastytutes.com. Today I'm going to show you one way to superimpose a flat illustration onto a brick wall and give it an authentic appearance as if it were actually there. I'm going to demonstrate a bunch of techniques and effects and along the way we are going to encounter some obstacles and I'm going to show you how we can overcome them in order to create the desired effect. If you're not familiar with the following effects in this tutorial, then I hope after this tutorial you will think differently about what we can achieve in Photoshop and use these techniques in future for other creative projects. Okay, so let's take a look at what makes this image. Let's look at our layers here, pull up the layers panel and let's have a look. What we have, we have two layer folders and within the uh, layer folders you can see that we've got subfolders and in each folder we have the layers that make up this this image now I know there looks like there's a lot going on in this image but don't worry I will be explaining every step clearly so you understand exactly how we can achieve this effect so these are the images I use to create the final outcome two separate images a photo of a brick wall and a digital illustration created in Adobe Illustrator previously. I want to take this opportunity to give a quick shout out to Sal Artkip. I want to thank him for allowing me to use this illustration, which he designed, but I actually created it into a vector illustration and you can see how I did that in another video. He is a talented illustrator and I suggest you check out his channel. The link is in the description. Also, you can download the brick wall texture online. It's part of a collection which you can get for free. There are like 15 samples in there. You can also download the work document, the, the Photoshop work document. The link is in the description. Now, lastly, this tutorial is going to cover some complex instructions and effects. So to help you follow along, you can download the project PDF sheet for free. This has everything you need to follow along with this tutorial and has a comprehensive breakdown of the layer hierarchy that we will be covering in this tutorial. So I suggest you download this. And with all that said, let's make a start. So here we are. We are here with our brick wall image. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this layer. I need to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to press Command A and to select all and then Command C to copy and Command V to paste. So if we look in our layers panel we now have a second layer on top and I'm quickly going to change the hue saturation of this image because I need this new layer to be in a, in a sense grayscale. So I'm going to press Command U and that's going to pull up my hue saturation toolbar and I'm going to come to the saturation in the middle and just grab our toggle there and pull it all the way to the left and that is in effect made it black and white and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my blending modes, my layer blending modes and do a quick overlay and you can see the effect that has immediately so let's toggle the visibility of that layer and you can see what's happening it's just adding uh, a lot more depth and a bit more contrast to the brick wall there but uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to toggle the visibility because we're going to use that one a little bit later on so now we're going to come to our image and we're going to start with the image and we're going to put this image into our composition so I'm going to press command A to select all and then command X to cut I'm going to come back to my brick wall image and press command V to paste and as we can see we've got this white area in the background I don't want that so I'm going to press W to pull up my magic wand and I'm just going to click and select this white area and press delete then I'm going to press command D to deselect that area and if we look closely on our layers panel this is actually on top of the brick wall layer we just duplicated so I'm just going to drag this underneath because that is important for later on and before we do anything else I just want to quickly name the the layers here so it's all clear and it uh, corresponds to the worksheet so 
let's call this color one and we're going to rename the black and white brick layer on top to B W black and white wall image overlay okay right then with that done we are the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move this illustration into place so uh, let's move this into place and change the scale so I'm going to press command T and this is going to pull up my free transform and this is going to allow me to change the size so by pressing and holding shift on the keyboard I can put my mouse over the top left hand corner and scale it up so by holding shift that will that will mean that I can scale the image up nice nicely so I'm just going to scale it up to about there and press enter and that's looking just fine I'm just going to move that so we have it coming in from the side there and once I'm happy with the layout of this illustration I want to start to break it up so what I need to do next is I want to break up the black from the color and we'll see why later but for now I'm just going to take that all away so I'm going to come to select color range and I'm going to select on a black there okay and then I'm just going to hit command X and command V and now you can see that I've got I've separated the black from the color so let's just put that back into place and for now I'm just going to toggle the visibility of the black area let's name that let's name that layer to black area and we don't need that right now so I'm just going to toggle the visibility of that and we've got our colors back now it's at this stage I want to draw your attention back to the black and white wall image overlay layer that we created earlier on so let's bring that back and now you can see that when we do bring the visibility back you can see the effect it has and immediately you can see that you can see the bricks on top and it kind of gives you the illusion that the image is in effect superimposed onto the background but in my opinion this isn't enough there's a lot of things that are questionable about this for example you've got a lot of white in the bricks area there let's just zoom in you've got a lot of white in the bricks and to me it just doesn't look authentic if you paint on top of bricks then you know all the bricks are in effect green so this is kind of unrealistic so let's zoom out a little bit and what I'm going to do next is just apply some more color effects to the to this layer color one here so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to right click on color one and duplicate the layer and I'm going to call this color duplicate one okay and then I'm going to come straight up to the layer blending mode and I'm going to hit a multiply and as we can see that really enriches the color for us in a very quick and easy way but that is actually quite intense for me so I'm going to come to the opacity and change this to 20 percent so let's toggle the visibility so we're just bringing we're just subtly riching those colors just ever so slightly so let's bring back the visibility of our black area and let's zoom out and take a look at this so that's looking that's looking quite interesting but again like I said earlier on if we zoom in I'm not entirely happy with the the brick effects even though we've got this overlay brick which makes it gives it a nice appearance what I want to do next is try and fill in the white areas of the bricks there to make it look like it's been properly painted on so how am I going to do that so I'm going to come to my layers panel and I'm going to select on the top layer the black and white image overlay and I'm going to select it and create a new document with it so I'm going to press command A to select all command C to copy and then I'm going to press command N to create a new document and by copying the image before we create a new document that's going to automatically create the right size uh, document when I create a new so okay and command V to paste and then I'm going to come to image mode and grayscale and we can flatten that layer doesn't matter right now and I'm going to press command I to invert the image and by doing that if we zoom in we can see that we've in a sense created uh, filled in the white areas of the bricks in between but I need to push up the contrast of this so I'm going to press command L to bring up my levels and I'm just going to tweak the areas here let's just push this up get a nice contrast 
the black area in between the bricks and let's go with that okay let's zoom out and then what I need to do is create the green area because I'm going to start with the green area of the head we've got three colors here yellow pink and green so I'm going to start with the green so I'm going to go to image mode and duo tone and I'm going to select a green image uh, sorry a green color okay and you can see what uh, the duo tone does to that now it's important at this stage to come back to image mode and turn it back to RGB color because when we paste in uh, the character it will main it will bring in the colors instead of applying a duo tone to that also so let's come back to the composition and I'm going to select on my color layer and I'm going to make sure that I've still got my selection and press command C come back into my new brick wall and come to edit paste special and paste in place it's important that we paste in place because we want to select the right area for the bricks otherwise it's going to be out of sync right then so I'm going to press W to bring up my magic wand and I'm going to start to select all the green areas and to select multiple areas I'm going to hold down shift so I can start clicking on selecting all the green areas of my character and once I've got all that selected I'm going to select on my background and press command C to copy the the brick areas and I'm going to come back into my composition and press command V to paste whoops actually I'm going to undo that command Z because I need to come to edit paste special paste in place and there we have it now this image this layer looks a bit weird at the moment so we're going to come to our layers panel and just drag that above everything else and come up to our layer blending modes and select multiply and as you can see we have solved the problem of the white areas in between the bricks we now have some green areas but that is not looking right to me so we're going to do a little bit more tweaking I'm going to press command L and I'm just going to tweak the levels a little bit just to bring out the, the contrast of those bricks there you go, it's looking a little bit little bit more defined push that up a little bit and the green is looking a little bit I'm not sure about the colour either so I'm going to press command U because we're going to change the hue saturation I'm just going to tweak the saturation a little bit, bring that down, and there you go. That's looking a little bit more, looks a little bit more real. It's darker areas as bricks, and we can change the hue as well if we want to, just bring that a little bit darker. I want to go for the effect, like the paint is sort of built up in between those brick areas. And we can tweak this, it's, it's up to you really. And I'm going to go with that, and let's zoom out a little bit. And that's looking a lot more interesting. Now let's toggle the visibility of this image and see how it improves the image. So that was before and that's after. And you may agree that that looks a little bit more authentic. So it's at this stage I want to pay attention to my layers and just tidy it up a little bit. So I'm going to first start with my original color layers that I brought in and I'm going to select select on the black area and by holding shift I'm going to select on color one and by pressing command G I'm going to group the, those layers and I'm going to call this group graph image and I'm going to select on the layer above and press command G and I'm going to name this layer head bricks so now we've got our head bricks and our graph image. So now we've applied the effect to the, the green area of the bricks. We're going to now focus on the tongue area and the eyes. So we're going to need to get some pink bricks there to fill in those gaps. So we're going to come back to the image where we created the green. And I'm just going to toggle the visibility or even get rid of that layer on the top because we don't need that right now and we're going to come to image mode and grayscale and we're going to discard that because we're going to change it from green and we're going to do image mode duotone again and convert it to a red 
So we're going to get a nice sort of pinky color there and click OK. OK. And again, we're going to copy this image. Command A, Command C, and come and edit special paste, paste in place. And there we go. Obviously, I forgot to change the image to RGB, so by pasting the image in, it's applied the geotone to that, but I guess it doesn't matter at this stage because all we're, all we're looking for is the area. So I can select the tongue and select on the background and copy the bricks, Command C, back to our image. And this time we're going to just make sure we paste on top of everything else. I'm going to quickly select on my head bricks. So when I go to edit, special paste, it will paste above above everything. And again, I'm going to come to layer blending mode and hit multiply. And let's zoom in a little bit. So yes, again, we filled in the gaps, but you can barely see that. So we're going to press Command L. I'm going to tweak the levels again. Let's push this up and let's add more some more definition to them, them bricks there. Let's do that. How is that looking? Okay, let's just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to press Command U. And we're going to tweak the saturation slightly because that is looking a bit full on there, don't you think? So let's push the hue saturation down. Let's toggle the hue. That's looking okay. And if I want to increase that depth again, I can always go to duplicate layer and duplicate that. There you go and push, this, push that up right nice and easy. Let's toggle the opacity of that so we can get a nice 50%. And by pressing shift, I'm going to click on the top layer and press the layer below. And by pressing command G, I can group this layer and call it tongue whoops tongue bricks okay so next up we're going to do exactly the same for the eyes so let's come back to our bricks here and you can see that this is all pink tell you what we're going to do this time we're just going to keep it the way it is but we're not going to delete the character we're just going to leave him in there and we're going to go to image mode Grayscale, okay, and image mode duotone, and we're going to try and select a type of an orange, a type of orange here. Let's go for something like that, okay, and press W, and I'm going to select on my character layer here, and select the area of the eyes by holding Shift. I can select multiple areas, and again, Command, whoops come down to my bricks here before I copy, there we go, command C to copy, back to my back to my composition here, and cl click on the head bricks layer because I want to select or paste on top of that, and then edit, special paste, paste in place, and again mode multiply, and let's zoom in on that, Command L, tweak my levels here. We're going to darken up that layer. There we go. It's looking pretty good. You can really see that. And Command U, let's tweak the hue saturation. Let's tweak the hue a little. And that is looking just fine. Let's quickly group this layer in the layers panel. Command G, and I'm going to call this I bricks, and that pretty much finishes all the work on the color areas. Now let's zoom in a little bit. On the colors, we've got a nice brick texture here, but if we look at this black line, that's not really blending well with the wall. So let's address that. What we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing really, but just a little bit different. Let's come back to my Lays panel and drop down my graph image group and make sure we've got our black area selected. I'm going to press Command A to select all, Command C, and then come back into my 
wall, my colored wall composition here. And you can see we've got the image in here still, the, the character image, but we don't need him anymore, so we can delete that, yes. And we're gonna to come to image, mode, and grayscale, okay. And again, we are going to edit, paste special, paste in place. And we're going to come to select, color range, click on the black there, so we can select everything that is black, and come to our background, and copy. Let's come back to our composition, and I'm going to just press deselect there to deselect. And I'm going to come to my layers panel and select color duplicate one because I want to paste it on top of that and underneath the black area. So edit, paste special, paste in place. And let's quickly um, toggle the visibility of the black area so we can see our new layer. And we're going to multiply that and press Command L to pull up my levels. Command L. And let's just darken up that image there. There you go. So we get a nice fill there, push up the contrast. And there you go. We can see that we've got a nice black stroke, and that looks like it's almost been painted on there. And what I can do is I can come back to my black area and just tweak the opacity so we can just overlay that black area underneath. Let's rename this black area duplicate one and leave that there. And that completes our graffiti image. So in my layers panel, I'm just going to select the top layer, the black and white image overlay, the black wall image overlay, and I'm just going to hold shift and click the graph image, the, the bottom folder, and press command G. And I'm just going to name this graffiti image. And that's just gonna give us a nice clean document. So now we can see that we've got a nice hierarchy going on there. Now, that is pretty much the image complete. But before I finish the tutorial, I just want to add one last effect just to give it a bit more, a bit more of a wow, a bit more pizzazz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my layers panel, I'm going to select the whole group, the whole graffiti image group. By holding shift, I'm going to select the background image underneath, and I'm going to right click and duplicate layers. Click OK. So now you can see that we've duplicate those layers on top, but I just want to create a flat image. I'm going to press Command E, and that's just going to merge all those layers into a, just a single layer. Now what I'm going to do with that layer is come to my layer, bl layer blending modes and multiply. So that's going to make it all nice and dark there. But then I'm going to come down to the bottom of my layers panel, and the third icon from the left, I'm going to add a layer mask. So let's add that layer mask at a click of a button. And if we look in our layer, now we've got two thumbnails. We've got a white area and the actual image area. I'm going to make sure that I've clicked this white area. Click the white area. And I'm going to come over to my menu and grab the elliptical marquee tool. I'm just going to draw a wide ellipse here and just move that into place. Then I'm going to come over and grab my paint bucket and get a color black, okay, and just click in the middle. And you can see there that we've deleted some of the area in the middle. And now I'm going to come with this area selected still. I'm going to come to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm just going to tweak the, the blur there so we get a nice sort of area coming in from around there. Let's go with let's go with that. It's going to blur that area. Okay. And then I'm going to come to my layers panel and duplicate this layer and maybe tweak the opacity to about 50%. So then I'm going to select both these layers by holding shift and selecting. I'm going to group these. Command G. And I'm just going to call this shadow cast and you can see when we toggle what we've done there we just add a little bit of 
depth to the outside of the picture. And there you have it. That is one way how you can superimpose an illustration onto a brick wall. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Lots more videos like this coming soon. And if you're interested, hop over to my website at tastytutes.com. You can see more videos just like this there. And from there, you can follow me on Twitter, where I'll be talking about other various creative topics. I hope to see you there. So have fun, guys, and I'll see you next time.